Hello, I'm Entrilism. Welcome to Aurora Forex, the incredibly in-depth, frustratingly fantastic space strategy game. So, we're currently building a whole load of ships, and uh, we have finally managed to retool for the Fire Flash, which is our command vessel, and we are starting to build that. Like, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Uh, it will be done. It will be done this decade, May and August of 99. So we'll just get that in under the wire. I'm actually kind of surprised at that. That's only about a year and a half ish to be built i thought that'd be longer uh so it looks like by the end of the decade we will actually have a reasonable fleet obviously we want to build it beyond that but that is good for now uh beyond that i've sent our fuel hub over to subject delta and i've set up if we go over here a tanker to do fuel runs from the fuel hub back to our colony and that'll be dumping off fuel at Subject Delta C1. Allowing us to kind of build up a stockpile of fuel on the edge of our space. So, Subject Delta here. Gonna be a pretty good target. Agent, I had a little bit more trouble with. Obviously, there's no good gas giants in Agent in which to uh, really situate a nice harvester for fuel. So, instead, I have gone with... If we look over at Summary... There we go. Uh, fuel refineries. Now, these will turn sorium that we mine, instead of gaseous sorium, into fuel. Uh, the downside, of course, is that sorium is not hugely abundant. 0.1 availability and 0.5 availability. Um, it'll do something, but... Eh, that's, that's about all I can say for it. Like, there'll be some. Uh, I've also set up reserves. This is basically an amount where it will not send it via mass driver and it will not transfer it to a cargo vessel that says I would like to take your stuff so the cargo vessels that we have running minerals back should not be taking the sorium from here because we need to make fuel uh we actually only have a tiny stockpile at the moment mostly because this is point one availability and we have no mines on agent two we actually only just started the terraforming here have we started the terraforming Yeah, orbital terraforming modules. We should start the terraforming. Why are we not starting the terraforming? Okay, let's start off with water vapor. We need water vapor. And it'll be relatively quick, so we'll go for 0.5. Okay. Uh, subject... Not subject, sorry. Agent A3 is now perfectly livable. Actually, quite a balmy 23... Oh, sorry. Uh, balmy 35 degrees C, almost. It's quite warm, actually. Uh, the hydrographic extent is acceptable. And everything is stable. So, yeah, this is good. We'll do Agent A2. And then after we do that, we'll move on to Agent A1. Agent A1 is going to be a much bigger task. The colony cost of this is going to be quite high. But that's mostly because it's got a whole load of greenhouse gas going on. Greenhouse factor is three. So, yeah, that's that's a lot. If we go here, you'll see that base temperature, if we remove the greenhouse gas, is going to be just under like 200 degrees C. Bring that down with some Phrygium. We can probably get that in the acceptable range. Uh, it will be three times faster than Earth, so it will be a little bit on the slow side, especially because its colony cost is currently 9.4. But when we get this place sorted, there's a whole load of minerals here. Admittedly, mostly geranium, neutronium, the rest are kind of low accessibility, which kind of sucks. But yeah, I mean, Vendorite as well, but that's a less important mineral. Still, it'll be pretty useful. Um, the comet is sending us a bit of corundium, a bit of geranium, a bit of neutronium, boronide, venderite. All good. But again, not, not the sorry we need. There's also one other downside. Missiles. Now, we need to be able to make missiles in both Agent and Subject Delta, according to one of the motions that was put forwards by the interactivity RP element. And missiles require galacite and tritanium and fuel. So, ignoring the fuel bit, because we've already talked about that, I've put some reserve on both tritanium and galacite. However, you'll notice that neither of these are being produced here. Okay, let's look at you. Well, we have some tritanium, no galacite. Okay, where's the galacite? No, no, no where's the galacite? Point one availability. That's, that's the galacite. Is there any galacite on anyone else? Like... Yes, okay. The second comet has some galacite. Well, I guess we will create a colony on that. 
Mm, there is a little bit of Sorium here. Again, just Sorium is less important. I won't deal with this for now. Like, again, just Sorium is not enough for our miners to be deployed there. We still have a mining issue, so we don't really want to be deploying mines in less valuable places. But the Galaxy here will certainly come in handy. Meanwhile, over in Subject Delta, we're going to be doing the same thing. And again, Tritanium and Galasite not available on the planet we want them on. Galasite and Tritanium are available here. However, we're having issues with the population. Um, the reason that they keep complaining about overcrowding despite they uh, have, you know, the orbital habitats is because someone keeps taking infrastructure and then they move people into the infrastructure and then they say, oh, no, we've moved too many people into the infrastructure and it's very annoying. And they keep bringing more infrastructure. The civilian economy is doing that. And it's not me. So at some point, we're going to have to go over and just rip the infrastructure and people out of the planet. Because it's really doing my head in. Um, what do we have in the way of... Yeah, Galasite here. We are purchasing that. We are sending it... Oh, no, we're not purchasing. There we go. Purchase. Done. That should give us... Pretty reasonable amount of Galasite. That's like 30 automated mine equivalents. And it's just Galasite. Uh, Asteroid 1. No Galasite. No Tritanium. Other good stuff, but... Oh, the Saurian will come in handy. Uh, actually, it won't. I just realized, you know, the Saurian won't come in handy. We aren't actually turning Saurian into fuel here. We're just using the gaseous harvesters, which just instantly turn it while I mine it. Uh, Tritanium. Yes. Okay. So, with a little bit of work, we should be okay here. Uh... Do you not have a mass driver? Uh, add supply. Please give... Oh. Okay. Have I not selected the mass driver? Oh. Command. Whoops. There we go. Mass driver. Hopefully that will get a mass driver over there. Well, that's all said and done. I will just draw our attention real quick to the fact that we need more workers at Hoyle. Um, we're going to have to send someone over there. But today's project is going to be the fact that the Holy Rock is complaining about military protection. And that is because we've only really just started colonizing it and there is nothing to protect it militarily in the system. Uh, Holy Rock over here in Aliwiz. Definitely a system that we want to build up. So this is worth investing in. Now... Originally, the way we did the whole military protection thing is we got a load of fighter-sized platforms with ridiculous life expectancy and then dumped them on the jump point. So they would actually be useful because they're going to be there if someone jumps in. We'd be able to use them to shoot enemies. And they also have an incredibly long lifespan. Now, the ones we actually put in will probably need replacing in the next decade. So we will probably want a solution to that. However, right now, uh, we're kind of busy. Um... If you look at Earth, shipyards, everything is kind of busy here. Uh, Lind Electric Boat Company, we will be wanting to make some new science vessels soon. We do have a new engine tech, and quite frankly, we could do with more geosurvey vessels. We have two. That's not enough. We actually expanded our like range quite a bit, and you'll notice that there are going to be several that just haven't been explored. Um... One, two, three, four, yeah. There's a fair few around. Not as many as I thought there would be, but certainly, like, another two would not be bad. Uh, we could build them at Pistota, which means that they could be fac sized instead of being, you know, diddy sized So, fac instead might be worthwhile. So, I think the two options we really have are fac or fighter. Fighters, obviously, we don't need to build them at the slipway. They can be built at, you know, fighter industry. Packs, they get to be built at the slipway. Packs can be twice as big. But it's going to come down to this. And this this is kind of an important thing that people kind of like, wait, why are you using fighters to do that, etc.? Why are you using missiles? You should make some beam things, sit them on the jump point. Um, engines. If you put a missile platform on a jump point, enemy comes through, they're going to be in range of the missile. Like, unless you design some really dumb missile, it, it's going to be in range of the missile. People can jump in, provided they do a squadron transit, which jumps them in slightly away from the jump point to avoid, you know, beam defense. 
up to, you know, like a million, maybe a million and a half with top tech away from the jump point. If you give your things beam weapons, they're not going to be able to shoot that distance. They're going to be able to shoot at, at, at very best top end. We're talking like maybe a million and that's going to be with damage drop off, etc. Now, normally you'd solve this by saying, oh, I'll move towards them. If you want to move towards them, you're going to need an engine. If you have an engine, well, then suddenly your number of people on board is going to shoot up. Your maintenance requirement is going to shoot up. Your space of weapons is going to go down. Maintenance requirement means you're massively cutting, massively cutting how long your vessel can be there for. And the, we want to kind of leave something there. So it, it really shouldn't have an engine. Also, beam weapons require a lot of crew. Box launchers, which is what we've been using on our fighters, require basically no one. Whereas, like, one laser might require, you know, 12, 18, 24 crew. So, my reasoning here is we're probably better off, again, using box launchers. And I don't really like using box launchers en masse because they're a little bit spammy. Um, in this case, not as bad because these things, obviously, if they want to fire the load, if there's anyone left, they will just get destroyed. They have no way of defending themselves. Um, they're mostly there just to protect the system in, like, people won't complain. However, we might want to make some updates to our old ones, and we might want to give them new missiles. I'd like to be able to use lasers, but we're going to need to be able to move for that. Just how it is. Uh, we could make them fact-sized. That's the other choice here. And again, we can move those inside of a carrier. All it requires is the carrier to have enough space. And I believe our carrier is space for 20 platforms, which is the same as 10 facts. Um, because our platforms are max size fighters. So, if we whip out the original uh, optical weapon platform, the Nave of Sponges, you can see that we have eight missile launchers, six of Wakazashis, uh, warning fire control. Honestly, there's, there's not a lot of tech that's going to change on this. Because the box launches aren't going to change. The fire control could be smaller. And the active sensor could be smaller. Like, the active sensor could probably be five tons. The missile fire control could be five tons. But how much does it weigh at the moment? Probably not very much at all. It's hard to tell. Um, Reynolds. Oh, I didn't put the size of it in. That's going to save us, you know, 30 tons. If we're saving a bit more, we can maybe get an extra missile in. But, hmm. It's hard to see what we'd really improve here. The development time is 50 years, which, again, that's a lot. The only thing we could possibly do is say, well, let's have a look at building them as facts. So, I'm just going to whip up a quick variant, which is a fact variant. And we'll see if it's going to be worth it. Okay, uh, with the update, if we went for a fax size design, they'd be a thousand tons. They'd have exactly the same number of crew. And uh, update the missile fire control. They even have two sensors now. One designed to go to 10.7 million um, and targeting five kiloton ships. The other one designed only to go to six million, but targeting fax size ships. Because both of them are five tons. It Kind of was a no-brainer. Be like, oh, I guess we have both of them then. And it has 18 missile launchers. It's twice the size and has, you know, an extra, what, 125% the missiles. It's it's a good increase and one that's really hard to ignore. Like, this is pretty damn tempting. And the, th the thing is, like, the reason this is possible is something that I think is wrong in Aurora to an extent. Um, box launchers don't need any crew. Like, their, their crew requirement is zero. And you might, you might have been like, okay, maybe that's fine. But if you say that's fine, then why why is there no equivalent of that for lasers? Even the smallest laser weapon. Uh, let's go find... What's our smallest laser? Uh, this tiny one here. It's not hugely small, but... It does require 12 crew. It's not the smallest laser we have. Well, we could make, but it's a pretty small laser. I think we could make maybe one size down from this, but that's 12 crew. And it's 200 tons. 
And yes, it can fire over and over again, but missiles just can do so much. And obviously the box launcher can only fire once before it needs to be reloaded, etc. Blah, blah, blah. But it, it's the only way you can make this sort of platform where you're like, yes, it will just be out there for 50 years. Because the crew requirement is so low that when you say, oh, here's extra rations for your deployment time of 50 years, people don't mind. They don't care. They're like, okay, that's easy to pack that much food in. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, so, I think we'll honestly go with the fact design. As much as I would like to build them at the fighter factory, because it's just a little bit simpler. This is going to be pretty useful. I mean... We can fit 10 of these, and that means in an Alpha Strike, we can launch 180 missiles. It will actually have a purpose when defending a system, as opposed to being, you know, somewhat of a... Yeah. Obviously, the Naval Sponges, when you had 20 of them, they could launch 160. But, mm. I've also gone in and I've given them Wakazashi's... Oh, oh sorry, Wakazashi 3s, so they do have the updated missile design. And this is fine. I, we're going to rename it. Uh... Naval Sponges 2. And yes, it is kind of like a size change, but it's exactly the same kind of format. I think that despite the size change, it will retain the name of Sponge name. It's just... Oh, it's so silly. But there's no way you can do it with beam weapons, so we'll do this. Uh, we could only maybe put 5 in a system instead. You know. Do that. Or hell, maybe 5 at different jump points. We can make it work. Right, with that said, we're going to obsolete the name of sponges. There we go. And... Retool. That'll take until mid-February, which is less than a month. About half a month, actually. So good being using facts here. Oof, really helps. Uh, do we want to update our geo survey design? I think that might be the good plan. Th that might be the good plan. I can words. The alternative is that we switch to a multi roll craft. Might make it easier on us. Because that way you can switch back and forth between expanding and looking in new systems and actually investigating the systems in detail without having to switch between the different craft. But we are set up for what we have at the moment. And I don't think our craft are going to take a huge change. Let's look at them. Uh, our geo survey craft. Obviously, we could do an armor update. An engine update. I'm thinking a longer deployment time as well. However, we want to make that work. Oh. And a jump drive update. There's actually quite a few things that would need to be changed here. Yeah, because their jump drive is going to go from E5 to E8. So that's two steps because there's E6, E8. Two steps in that. The engine goes up a step. The armor goes up a step. EM sensor goes up two step. Thermal sensor goes up a step. The only thing that's going to stay the same is going to be the sensors and... Those are expensive. Each sensor is very expensive, so it, it might still be worth upgrading. But equally, we could just scrap our current vessels and use the parts to make a combined vessel. Um... Combined vessel would be a little bit easier in terms of the micro have a quick think about this this is this is one of those moments where it's going to be quite a, a big choice it's not going to hugely impact the game in terms of what well, we have to defend ourselves but it will change like how our approach is going to be to which route do we want to go with this uh it would save us on commanders because then we'd only need one science department on the ship that can do both obviously if we have more ships you know that evens out but i don't think we'd need more ships because one ship can be doing both roles in, as opposed to two ships doing two roles that maybe we don't have a use for one role part of the time Okay, we're going to make a combined vessel. We're going to bring back the Sophie set because we did use a combined vessel before we started using the Leon classes. But after the 40 packs, which was our very first, I think the 40 packs was actually just a just a grav or just a 
Geo? Maybe just Geo. Either way, we're going to be using the Sophie set. And I've made the Sophie set too by just copying. It used composite armor. We're definitely going to be updating that. Compressed carbon. We're going to go for 7,000 tons is going to be a maximum in this vessel. I would like to go lower. Maybe going like 5,000 tons. So first things first, we're going to rip out the engine. We're going to rip out the jump drive. Rip out maintenance, engineering spaces, all that jazz. And sensor. We'll keep the science department because obviously we want that. Really? There was a science department on the Sophie set? Huh. Did we ever really use the Sophie set then? Use an improved nuclear pulse engine. Okay, I guess we did. I just thought the science department was a later creation. Either way, uh, and we'll just go down to the one fuel for now. This way we can update later. We will add ourselves. Ooh, I'm tempted by the larger thermal unit here. Like this was a sensor we designed for military class vessels. 300 tons. It goes on the command vessel we're using, but I think it's probably worthwhile. Um, we could put ECM on this vessel as well. Make it harder to shoot us. But to be honest, if people are shooting us, we're already going to be well within their range or not know it and get be, be getting closer. Or they're going to be chasing us and we won't win, win a foot race. This is not going to be a fast craft. It's going to be a long lived craft. Uh, we'll try for 10 years as well. So that's fine. We want an EM sensor. Uh, again, we'll get our, what's this? 100 ton? I should put the name, uh, the, the weight in. 150 ton. Yeah, let's uh, rename component. Put a mass in here. Mass 150 tons. Chuck that in. Right. You can see that the size of the vessel is kind of increasing already. Uh, we will then grab ourselves one grav and one geo on top of the ones we already have. So we've got two, two. Do we want to go further up on those? Hmm. We'll see. Let's design ourselves a jump engine. Um, jump drive, jump drive, jump drive. Here we go. Yeah, we have nothing in this size range. So, new jump drive it is. Jump engine. Right, uh, squadron size, minimum. Radius, minimum. Military, yes, because this will be a military craft. If we go for 5,000 tons, this will be a 2,000... Uh, uh, sorry, if this will be a 625 ton engine. And if we go for a 7,000 tonner, goes up by like 800, uh, 250. Uh, you know what? This might be a good time to bring out everyone's favorite. Because it's not like we're going to have spare space to go, oh, I guess we use the spare space for more guns. This is going to be a efficient ship. We need to make it efficient as possible. So ship optimizer. Uh, our jump efficiency is 8. Uh, max squadron size, they're all lows. Jump drive. Desired tonnage. Let's say we're trying for 5,000 vessel at the moment. Desired speed, 3,000. And desired range. What was the range of our previous vessels? Two sixty billion. And that wasn't out as long as we wanted. That's gonna have to be at least five hundred. So we're gonna go with uh, five twenty billion. Okay, what do we get? Uh, really chunky engine. Times five multiplier. Jump drive. Why are you saying 4,000 tonnage capacity? 
I don't... What? What? Uh, the desired tonnage is 5,000. Why are you trying to jump only 4,000? I don't... I don't get this. What, what do you want about? Are you okay? That said, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's having a good day. Let's turn off the jump drive. I think it's recognizing this is a 4,000 ton vessel because it says, hey, you've got 2,000 tons left. And I'm like, okay, I want 50% of the vessel to be engine. Are you thinking this is a 4,000 ton vessel? Am I, am I cocking this up somewhere? Oh, well, remaining tonnage is just too small for us. That will not cut it. Let's see if we go to 7,000. Total 7,000. There we go. Remaining tonnage. Ooh, that would work. Just. Okay, what if we lower our speed a little? What if we even try going like a little smaller on the engine? Ooh, can't be done. Okay, what if we go to like 2600? Zero, zero. This is slower than all of our freighters, FYI. Our freighters now go at like 4,000, so... Fine. We are going for a very, very long distance. Like, we're saying, hey, go out for 10 years and just chill. Like, if we reduced it, we'd, we'd, be, in, uh, we'd be in a much better situation. Um, I'm going to reduce it a bit more, even, because that is maybe over overshooting the mark. So, uh, mass, 875 tons. And then we need to get ourselves an engine. Get ourselves an engine. It's an internal fusion drive. That's an IFD to you. I don't know why there's a nest there. Um, well, I don't know why I'm doing this when I haven't actually changed the damn thing. Your power engine thingy. Yes. This is 55. And then the size is... Um, 39. It annoys me that it's not, it's just 50 tons away from being 2,000. Fine, fine. Could go more. It cost us 50 tons to go a little bit. You know what? Just, just the OCD. I'm going to do it. Uh, that's fuel. Uh, EP 67 milli. We're back to the land of millis and two kilotons. Bye. I didn't get a company name for the turret. Turret again? Okay. Didn't get a company name for the jump drive, did I? Do it, turbines. All right, fresh tech. Uh, we will rename the component. Add that on. And then engine. Add that on as well. Oh, okay. Plenty of space left. Hmm. Oh, we haven't done fuel. I guess, you know, fuel. That'll be a thing. Uh, right. One very large, one large, and a little bit extra. Okay. Okay, in the end, that actually wasn't that hard. What I did is I just got rid of some range by getting rid of a bit of fuel. Uh, we're now down to just over 400 billion, but I'm I'm okay with that. The other choice was to just get rid of a geological gravitational survey sensor, and I was less okay with that. Or, you know, chucking off a big chunk of EM or thermal. I think EM or thermal are going to be important to us. They're going to be able to tell us about signs of life, which is what would be kind of like an important thing to know. Um, Just saying... That will be the thing that's going to change how we approach the game at this stage. So, yes, 7,000 tons, 165 crew, the Sophie set Mark II, uh, fully equipped for 10 years, good range, a pretty decent turn of speed at uh, 3,143 kilometers per second, 
Admittedly, nowhere near as fast as our transports, but hey, this thing travels for like 10 years. I mean, it wouldn't travel for 10 years if you just put it in a line. It'll travel for... What's that? Four years? Yeah, about four years. But it will be stopping quite often. And worst case scenario, it just comes back and it refuels. That's fine. We will also have more refueling stations. Now we're going to be setting one up in Subject Delta and an agent. Eventually, I'd like to set one up in Sleepy Zoe as well. So I think this is a pretty decent plan. I like it. And it wasn't actually that hard to build. I was expecting something much more complicated. Uh, okay, naming convention. Periodic table. We could continue with that naming convention. You know what? I think continue with that naming convention makes sense. This is going to be a G... Uh, let's check. What was the... The designation on you was 2. You were 1. Sophie said, so you should really be 3. There we go. This is our first G3. As in, like, proper third generation. It might even be a little bit higher if you count the 40 pack, but that was like kind of a stopgap solution. So I don't really think that counts. But G3, this is our first Gen 3 craft. Admittedly, it's the same as the Gen 2 military craft. They're not, you know, generation across the board. It's generation of their niche. So whatever. Anyway, um, it's good. I like it. Let's go over here. I've probably forgotten something very important. I know. And, uh, well, you... Return of the name of sponges. You can retool. The Sophie set too. That'll be done in May. Anyone that comes back to refuel, we can now kind of break down into their constituent parts, and those sensors are going to save us a lot of time. The sensors are expensive, so um, that would be something that would be kind of handy. I do, I do wonder if we could just bring everyone home. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to bring all of the old ships home and we'll start breaking them apart. Okay, Jagnath to a times 10. You're going to be the next stop on the chopping block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ooh, you were original Jagnath. Now you're Jagnath 2. You're going to be Jagnath 3. Your mothers would be so proud. Uh, we will refit Jagnath 2 to Jagnath 3. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done. We can do that in one go now with the extra slipways. And that will take until May for the ones where the engines have been built already. Uh, July for the one where some of the engines have been built already. And November for the ones where we're building the engines from scratch. Yes, I would love to dedicate a bit more construction to engines, but that's not going to happen. We're busy right now. Sorry. Okay, we've retooled the Naval Sponges too. How long will it take to build such a vessel? It'll take until April. Huh, that's not too bad. We should be able to get that in under the wire and hopefully over to Aliwiz in time so they don't complain. Maybe? Hmm, we'll see. Uh, we would like to build... Do, 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 do. I'm tempted to say New Fighters Earth because why not? It was where we put the other ones. I mean, they were fighters and this isn't, but who's counting? Um, what we could do is put ourselves a, basically a new fleet in static defenses, which we can just call static defenses. I think I might actually do that. Uh, create fleet. Static. Defenses. I'll just call it new static defenses or static defenses, comma, new. I'll put the new at the beginning. And that is at Earth. Great. Okay, in which case we should see it show up. Okay, if we go to a different tab, come back. Okay, let's try going five seconds forwards. There we go. New static defenses. Uh, do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
the new and improved naval sponges. Mostly the old formula, just bigger. That's the tagline. Pod people, pod people, bigger pods. Not with a bigger living space, same number of people. Right. Uh, is there anything else I want to do with this? This one, that was something that needed to be done. Was it the event log? Did they say something in the event log? Military protection, meh. Overcrowding. Oh, yeah. I was wondering, we, do we have, like, just a colony ship that's just chilling while it's waiting for its friends to be made? I think we do. Colony, 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 colony. Uh, we need to refresh as well. Colony, 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 colony. colony. I am blind. It's up here. Here we go. We do have a colony ship. Okay. Let's solve this problem over in Subject Delta. We're going to solve this properly. Ugh, the population might be a bit too large for one colony ship. Whatever. We can always add more. And we're going to tell you to go join Subject Delta. Might need another. We will need another colony ship. How long until the next colony ship is ready? October, and that's when everyone's ready. Ugh. Damn. I assume that all the other colony ships are very busy. Although, that said, you're going to be done in 12 days. Oh, no, they are moving to locate. Oh, that's that's me. That's You're, you're going to be there in 12 days. I just told you to do that. Yes. I'm just going to push it up. Uh, okay, I have a plan for this. We can do this. All right, carry on. Right. Everyone is now in orbit. We're actually going to take the view over to Subject Delta because this has been enough of a annoyance. Uh, we need to travel between the two. Obviously, we're going to use the Lagrange points for that because that is the simplest way. You know, they came out the Lagrange point. We just went, Bloop. great. Uh, well, it just happens to be at the closest approach point. So, yeah. Um, right. You. Sophie, uh, Sophie Ebony. Sorry, Sapphire Ebony. Grab colonists. Unload them at sea. And come back here. That should take you like 10 hours plus loading time. So we're just going to accelerate time by a day. Okay, 5.5 .5 hours needed. All right, you're back. Great. Now, let's check the population. Eight million exactly. Well, to guarantee this, we're going to load colonists, and then we're going to have our Jagnath load infrastructure how much infrastructure is left quite a lot actually yeah 136 well there is a solution to that subject delta c unload all installations load installation infrastructure and I'm just going to tell you to cycle it until you complain. Hey, there's none left. Uh, and we don't need to do anything with the population. We should be fine. I will just get you to unload them. But once we get rid of all of that infrastructure. Yay, we got bigger lasers. Not that they're going to be useful for our current generation military ships. We've already done that. Uh, we're now working on advanced spinal mounts. Sweet. After that, I believe... I haven't queued anything up. Ooh. That's not good. Let's queue up Particle Lance. Because I mentioned how great Particle Lances were. We need them. So we'll add that to queue. And then I also want to queue up the actual, like, increases to beam strength, which obviously is the same as Particle Lance. It's just Particle Lance is, like, the concentration of it. So we'll get the strength bonus and the range bonus. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, that said, turret tracking speed is 
pretty pretty tasty how expensive is it in census and control because the value is different even though like yeah that's thirty thousand, whereas over here it's much cheaper it might sync up either way um having better point defense is is important like there's no way to really cut around that We'll go energy weapons and we'll get the turret tracking speed added to the queue. But then we'll bump it up above the beams, but not above particle lance. And while we're here, we'll also get sensors and control. And we will add ourselves. Team sensitivity 11. Ooh, that would make our sensors much better. You know what? We will add that to Q. And then immediately after that, do the fire control. And I guess we'll bump electronic hardening on the basis of it's not a priority. Uh, it is very cheap. You know, we will keep it quite high. It is cheap. What are we doing at the moment that's taking our time? Countermeasures 2. Oh. Yeah, that's not going to take too long, actually. We're about to finish it. Sweet. We can replace that on all of our ships. Fantastic. Ha! We were unable to load infrastructure. Okay. Stop cycling moves. Uh, remove all. Move to Delta A1. Have you got anything in your transport hold? No. Subject Delta A1, do you have any infrastructure? No. No. And you're at your population limit. Perfect. Okay, I, I don't see any reason for us to draw this out. You're good. Um, Go back to Sol. Earth. Refuel, just chill there. I need to change the names to make them all Jagnus 3s. I'll do that in between episodes at some stage. Probably when more upgrades have been done. Or maybe when, actually probably earlier, because the point is going to be able to know which ones have been upgraded. Uh, and then we'll want to grab the Sapphire Ebony. Auto route to Sol. We'll just... Have you got any colonists on board? No. Okay. We don't need to drop anyone off of Titan. So used to doing that. And we'll refuel. And then I think we will join... Colony Fleet. Even though there's no one in the fleet, because that's where the other four are going to be spawned, so we might as well make sure they're all together. They did it again. They added more infrastructure. Why? Why? Why are you doing this? Stop. Stop it. Stop. Stop now. I don't. I don't want the infrastructure. Don't. Don't give me the infrastructure. Why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why am I bothering with these planets where people keep dumping infrastructure? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh. Anyway, um, we've done our retooling for the Sophie set. We have ourselves a load of neighbor sponges. Um, some Jagnus have been refitted. The rest are going to take a little bit longer. And okay, so let's get all of our new station defenses, which will spawn in here. Perfect, they did. And they all have ammo. Nice. We'll attach you and then movement orders. Earth. Active sensors on. Fleet. Go find the CV Auxiliary Ragland and land. Do your thing. Uh, While well, that's happening. We've oh got overcrowding again. This is great. I love it. So good. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll do the shipyard stuff. Fine. This is fine. This is fine. We're going to build uh, four Safer Set 2s just straight out. I don't see any reason that we should wait. We'll build them. They'll go straight into 
Survey fleet. One, two, three, four. And then we'll probably want to scrap more that are waiting. I think we can scrap at civilian places because of a bug. I'm not too worried about it since it's, you know, scrapping. If it was making something, I would be a little bit dubious. Uh, no, the bug's the other way around. Okay. The Wolfka? What is the Wolfka? I remember something called the Wolfka. I can't remember what it was. Ah, oh, it's our salvagers. Yeah. We haven't had a reason to use them in a while. That's a shame. Okay, well, there's nowhere to scrap the other exploration vessels, so I, I guess we won't be scrapping them yet. Maybe we could, maybe we could scrap here. Oh, we can scrap here, despite the fact that it, you know, isn't retooled. That's fine. It makes sense. It's just I don't expect Aurora to make sense most of the time. Uh, Leon Marcellius. Yes, please. Meanwhile. Uh -huh. Okay, auto route through to Aliwiz. Admittedly, you are incredibly slow. We should at some point update your engine, but... Wow, yeah, you'd be three times faster. This is going to take 126 days to get there. Oof. Okay, uh, you're coming through the Idril jump point, right? Yes. So, when you get there, send me a message, which is... Deploy! Holy rock! Defense. Please don't, you know, complain too much and get uppity before then. That would suck. Okay, we've just finished building the next of our fuel stations, which means everything else is bumped up. Sweet. Right, let's have a quick look at this. Uh, this fuel station, where are we going to put you? Um, hmm. Where does we have our one in sub D? We could take this one to somewhere near Agent, but honestly, Agent's so close to Sol. Instead of harvesting near, a near Agent and then transferring it over, we might as well just transfer it from Sol. I'm thinking Sleepy Zoe. Having a third... I know that the Orbital Defense Act doesn't require us to go to Sleepy Zoe, but I would like to extend it to Sleepy Zoe as on a voluntary basis, because it makes sense. Let's just find a gas giant that has... Really? Okay, there's, there is one here. Ugh, it's not good. Yeah, Sleepy Zoe is not the best place for this. Huh. Um, Tholius, I'm guessing, might be. No? Huh. Tell a lie. Davit. Yeah, the accessibility is a bit naff, though. What about over here? Better. Still not the best, but hey, that's where the precursors are doing it. Let's have a look in Tiergal. An unexplored Jovian. I believe this one's like ridiculously far out, though. Not the furthest out. It's only 14 billion. Obviously, 14 billion is a lot. But it's not unmappable. You can definitely, like, survey that at some point. Uh, what about in Kaldi? Yes. That's good amount of fuel. And we can always ship that into Sleepy Zoe. Accessibility terrible. Okay. So if we were to take this through to Caldi A9, how much effort will that require? Someone is going to have to do that job and it might take a little while. Uh, luckily, the Lilstrom is now a Alistair Class 3 tug. So it might be able to do the job. Uh, oh, we should probably uh, detach you. There we go. Right. Uh, 
we will track down a ship in fleet. And it's Caldi A9. Oh, that was Sleepy Zoe. Was it? Caldi A9. Yes, Caldi A9. Well, I'm going to go five seconds forwards. Just so we can see how this is actually going to be uh, done. Let's go to Caldi. K K K K K K K K Caldi. Ooh, two years. Well, just under two years to get Caldi, an extra year to get to A nine. How far out is A nine? Oh, fourteen billion. That would be why. Uh, that's a bit far. Like, I'm not overly worried about it, but. It's going to be a lot longer to really get it in place, put everything into action. It might be worthwhile just doing it in Sleepy Zoe for now. And then we can always transfer it later. Like, that's not an issue. Um, gas giant, gas giant, gas giant, gas giant, gas giant. Here we go. This was only 4 billion out, you know, that's fine. Uh, yeah. It'll last a while there. Not overly long, but it'll last long enough. Sleepy Zoe 8, 9. Yes, that's why I'm getting confused. We will remove last, remove last, remove last, remove last. Oh, not that one. And then Sleepy Zoe A9. There we go. Less than two years. Release tractor ship. This will probably need refueling. You know what? I just realized we could we could refuel the refueling station. And then the refueling station would refuel the tanker en route. You know what? Let's do it. This is ridiculous. But if we go Earth. Ref refuel from colony. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a lot of fuel we're taking on board. We're taking on board a full harvesting station worth of fuel. That's ridiculous. But we have the fuel for it. So I'm not going to worry. Then we go Sleepy Zoe. I think this is going to work. Uh, and then... Release track of ships. And then I guess also send a message and let me know. Because then we can check the fuel levels. Uh, the... It's two L's, right? Lil Strom has dumped fuel station in... In Sleepy Zoe. Because we'll need to set up a tanker to run that to the uh, actual planet and all that jazz. So that's fine. Okay, Sapphire Ebony 2, Group C, I have a job for you. Your colonist capacity is half a million. Go to Subject Delta. Load colonists. Unload colonists. Load. No, oh, wrong one that time. Load colonists. So we take half a million from A, dump them on C. We take another half a million from A, and then we just come back to the solar system. I, I would have you running to uh, Hoyle, where we need the colonists, but... Unfortunately, that's not on the cards. <sighs> 69 days, not including loading, so we're looking at, you know, 73, 74 days. Deploy Holy Rock Defense. Okay, we will do so. Uh, right. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Here we go. Ship list. Now, we could deploy everyone. Or we could deploy half of them on a drill, and then we could deploy half of them somewhere else. Not a drill, sorry. The a drill jump point. Now, the reason for jump points is that if anyone comes to attack us, they've come through the jump point, they're going to be in missile range. It's that simple. Um, we could deploy them at the Holy Rock itself, and if they have missiles, they'll just blow us away before they can get within missile range. However, if they don't have missiles, they'll have to close, because they're not going to be able to shoot us from 20 million away. So, they'll get within our missile range. So, I'm actually going to dump half of them on top of the Holy Rock, because I really want to defend the damn thing. So, we'll detach you. And then we will rename. You are 
Hold a weapon platform. At. Ali. Wiz. Who. Id. Two R's in Idril. Yes. Jump point. And then we'll ask you to move to the Holy Rock. And then we'll rename you to Older Weapon Platform. Ali Wiz. Holy Rock. No JP to indicate it's not on a jump point. Very well. You may now come back to Sol. And refuel from Earth. And I think we'll actually get Earth to make a few more of them just to be able to defend Sol or eventually maybe some of our most important systems that we have for like strategic defense. So Subject Delta, Agent, and maybe Sleepy Zoe or something. We'll see. The whole Ether situation we have going on is kind of scary. Uh, let's have a look at, say, Darlock. That was the one we discovered most recently, wasn't it? I mean, it brings it up to five Etherists. Not happy. Darlock, Darlock, Darlock. It's about 22 million kilometers across. Very well. Yeah, they don't really get smaller when you zoom out far enough. They kind of stay the same size, but they do grow. This is now 22 million. I believe it used to be much smaller. So, hmm. Sweet, we have more Sapphire Ebony's. Lovely. We're going to rename you. CS Sapphire Ebony Mark 3. And you are going to be E. Admittedly, we're running around in groups of like half the size I want because I just need them doing stuff. But oh well. Uh, we'll have you load colonists from Earth and you're going to go straight to Hoyle. Um, we really need to do that. Like, Hoyle needs more people. And then auto route back. The new speed is so great. They can do that in 44 days. That used to be such a long journey. Do that nine times. That'll get five million people over there. Hey, and they're jumping from Uranus to Earth. Sweet. That's going to make Earth really annoying to defend. If anyone gets into the Sol system, we're kind of in trouble, but it it will be helpful to an extent, to put it that way. Being able to just have cargo just yeeting across half the system instantly saves a lot of time. Ooh, we just finished our fuel consumption 0.5 liters per engine hour work. And we just built a mighty trick. Our very first of our Gen 2 ships. Well, military ships. Uh, we will pop out of Hoyle and congratulate you on the amazing work. And instantly put you back to work on our propulsion. What do you want to do? Uh, the jump radius? Yes. I think this is the important one. When you go from 50 to 100, it's not a... Not a big increase. People can still hit you with beams. You go from 100 to 250. That's where you start to see like, oh, that's an improvement. So we'll grab that. And it's also a very quick one to do. And maximum engine power modifier times three. That would make our anti-missile missiles pretty good. Our Wakazashi is pretty good. Uh, it'd be a great upgrade to fighters as well. Hmm. Yeah. So let's add that to the queue, and then after that, probably we'll do like magnetic fusion, uh, magnetic confinement fusion reactor or something. You know, going for more long term. Mm, yeah. You know what? I'll let them do their thing in case we want to do the next level of jump radius. And then once they're done, we'll see what we want to do next. Uh, if we go back to Earth, shipyard tasks, shipyards, mighty trick. We will build one more. 
those are our anti-missile missile frigates. So I think that's the first. We've got another one lined up, and this is going to be the third. I think three is probably reasonable. Um, this is probably going to be split into, say, three fleets to begin with. Maybe we'll have some extra ships that we can kind of disperse as needed. Maybe end up getting like four, actually. So um, everything else is still going apace. You're up to almost 40,000 tons. Obviously, we want to get to a bit more than that, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. How are we doing for research over here? Uh, CP is on research rate. And after research rate is... Uh, nothing. We should queue something up. Construction production. Ship building rate. Or shipyard operations. Mmm. Mmm. Time and cost saving. Changes to shipyards. Yeah. We'll probably go to just going shipbuilding rate. Don't even need wealth. Our wealth has come down slightly, but it's still ridiculous. We'll take fire production as well, because that's quick to do. And then we'll take construction rate buff. Okay. Uh, righto. Well, what was I going to check? I was going to check something. Uh, oh, crap. Yeah, we've got 10% of our industry that I haven't allocated, which we really should do. Um, hmm. I'm going to say ordnance factories because that'll double that. And that's useful both for us producing missiles and then also for sending those ordnance factories over to other places that need them. Because obviously we want to send them to Agent and Subject Delta as mandated. So, Subject Delta, do you have any ordnance factories? We do, 70. Uh, that means the other ones are on the way. And Agent, you do, perfect. And yeah, it took a chunk out of ours. So yes, we do want to build more ordnance factories because that will replace what we've got. How long are we looking at making these missiles? Um, quite a while. Yeah, we do need to increase our missile like rate. That would be handy. In fact, we're probably better off putting our ordnance factories up from 31 to maybe almost almost 200. You know what? Let them do it. 231. It needs to be done. It, we need it. It's no question. Do 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 do. Uh, well, ooh, one thing we could check is Earth. Currently, Samantha Voidsinger, production 25, shipbuilding 15. I want to check if there's anyone better. Because, um, you know, population growth 25%. We don't necessarily need that anymore. Although that's still great. Don't get me wrong. We're definitely making use of it. Earth is a minimum A5. We're going to look for shipbuilding, followed by production, followed by population growth, followed by... What the hell do we care about the last one? Probably nothing. Maybe logistics. Okay, the one on Europa has the highest uh, shipbuilding. However, the 5% on production is just not enough. We've got a 2020 with zero population growth. Obviously, uh, Europe 1525, so. And then Samantha Voidsinger, 1525 with a 25 in. Yeah. I don't think we can really trade out here. Like, in total, you have a 40% bonus between shipbuilding and production, but you also have 25% on production on population. We could trade out for a total of 45 with a 15%, but that would really hurt our production. The 40% to shipbuilding is great, but. I don't want to hurt the production that much. We could go to a 35 and 10. So again, 45 total, but only 5% of the population. We could go to a 40%, 2020. But again, zero on the population growth. So, Sound of the Voicing is still really our best bet. Okay, we're going to start handing over some maintenance facilities to Agent and Subject Delta and ideally to Sleepy Zoe as well. I don't have the people to run them just yet, but if we look at our capacity, you'll see that we have uh, maintenance facility capacity 
million tons. Uh, we're currently maintaining about half that. And we have how many maintenance facilities? Uh, 815. We do need to up that number. But each of our maintenance facilities, I believe, is 1,600 tons. Uh, we could have, say, 160 tons in orbit. That would mean we need 100 of them. It would take a fair chunk away from Earth, but we can maybe make up for that. So Earth, load, maintenance facility, auto route to subject delta, and then unload, auto route back to Earth, and then fuel, and then just repeat that uh, four more times. Take you 300 days. Is anyone else going to be ready? Ooh, hello. You are ready. You can do the same thing then. In fact, load maintenance facility, auto route through to agent, unload, auto route back to Sol, refuel, and then repeat it again. And that'll take you a little less time because it's a little bit closer. Well, not hugely. We're going to need to replace those though. Mm, who is going to be done next? Uh, well, none of you, to be honest. Maintenance facility. Uh, and we probably want to even go higher on that. So let's aim to build 400. Of 20%. Uh, these fuel refineries that we're building... Those are less important. I'm going to down queue them. And I'm going to put you on 10% for now and up queue you. I will put you on 10% and then I will up queue you. Thank you. And that'll take... Oh, not as long as I thought. It'll take like five years. Yeah. Oh, that seems like a decent trade. I do need to at some point go through all the colonies and figure out like who actually has maintenance facilities. Because I think some of them do not... You have seven, which was the minimum. We're putting more over there now. Kind of an optional. We didn't need to. Subject Delta already seven. Oil has seven. Holy Rock has seven. Calica has none. Idril's got seven. Sleepy Zoe's got none. So Sleepy Zoe and Calica are the ones that need more. Well, luckily, we have some agent, uh, not agent, sorry, Jagna 3s. We can take you to Sleepy Zoe and Calica. Earth, load. Main facility, max items, load 14. Go to Calica. Unload. 7. I have a target. Unload installation. Oh, I didn't select the maintenance facility up here. Seven. There we go. Complain, complain. Auto route through to Sleepy Zoe. Unload. Nope. Unload all. I'll take 99 days. Oof, the new speed is so good. I'm also going to burn through fuel a little bit faster, but worth it. Beautiful. And that should fulfill the requirements of the Colonic Act, and then the Orbital Defense Act, and we're expanding that to Sleepy Zoe, and we've got our flagship gonna be built as soon as we have the slipway, slipway, shipyard, I got them right, uh, available. So that'll be all of that done. Um, the other act, I believe, was one that hasn't passed. I will double check on it. It still has a little bit of time, but the other act is the Military Service Act, which allows me to do conscripts, and it was massively voted down. So no conscripts, despite the fact I need conscripts. Uh, what else? Um, and we had an act that requires a Senate to be formed from the Great Houses, which did pass and is now kind of going to be active. Cool. Uh, right. Ooh, a load of Jagnas just got upgraded. Is that all of the Jagnas? Um, I need to be at Earth for this. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've got any fleets in orbit that are just sitting here? Waiting. 67 days. Oh, you're taking the strategist jump point. Yeah, 
Fair enough. When you get there, we can upgrade you. You have that already. Uh, what do we want to run stuff at the moment? I'm trying to think where I actually want to run anything. I would normally run infrastructure, but I don't want to run infrastructure because it'll start people to colonize. And we need to then do colony stuff. So we could instead... Hmm. I would start running infrastructure up to where we discovered... Where did we discover it? There was another... Yeah, in Tiergal. It's a logistics bonus. Terrible world for mining, but it's a really nice logistics bonus here. Again, logistics isn't the most important, but still, we could put a few labs there. I would start running infrastructure up there. Load. Infrastructure. Out of interest, how long would it take to get to Tiergal? 75 days. Eh, probably gives them too much time to start colonizing it. Yeah, we can't really do that. What about Earth in terms of mines? You must have some mines now. Yeah, like 126 mines just sitting here. Yeah, we're going to move these mines over. And I think we move them over to... A little bit to Agent, a little bit to AliWiz. Just to get them going. I also kind of want to go to Sleepy. Uh, not Sleepy, sorry. Uh, Subject Delta as well, but whatever. Uh, Agent for now. So we'll go to Agent. We will unload all installations. Auto route back to Sol. Load my... You know what? We should go to Titan and replace the ones on Titan. So unload. Then load automated mine. And then we can put these automated mines in important places where we've kind of been not doing that. So we'll pop over to um, Agent, we'll dump them on Comet 2, auto route back to Sol. Probably don't need to refuel on that. Not a particularly long route. You know, we'll refuel just in case. We do have less fuel than we had before. And that way we are replacing 10 mines or 10 automated mines on Titan with mines. They don't need to be automated mines, so we can just replace them. That means we can use our automated mines in other places. Now, for simplicity, I am just going to repeat this. And then that'll dump 100 automated mines on this comet. But what we'll probably do is we'll pull them off the comet and take them to other places. It will want automated mines on the comet, just not 100 of them. So we will start moving those. That's going to take a little while, but that'll take 100 of the automated mines off. We do have like another 200, no, another 120, I think. But that is the beginning of fixing our Titan problem. Titan will probably need more workers to make up for the loss of automated mines. Eh, oh well. That's it. I guess we aren't using the Corundium as fast as we once were. Yeah, Corundium is actually piling up quite nicely. We probably don't need to replace them as much. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll replace this hundred in mean, the next hundred we won't bother with and I think since we just got a load of Sophie sets built and an ice lord built I think we're in a good position to end the episode obviously we've got a part of a fleet like we've got like two ships it's not enough to be really doing anything with just yet but it's a nice start and the Sophie sets are also pretty damn nice I will say that we kind of want to go to like eight on them don't want to just be going on four and we don't desperately need to send them out, so we'll just get that construction going. But uh, this is a pretty good place for us to call it for now. One, two, three, four. Ah, I got carbon coming. Sweet. Um, I think next episode is just going to run us down to the election and to the changeover. 2100, turn of the century. Just a year's time. Unless anything crazy happens, but what's the chance of that, eh? I've been Andrew Lizzie. If you want to go check out the Discord with all the interactivity and stuff and the election going on and all the acts and so on, uh, feel free to head over to the Discord. There'll be a link down below, a link dot, uh, link tr dot ee, link tree, link tr dot ee, forward slash Andrew Lizzie. And uh, you'll see the Discord and stuff linked there. You can also go there for like the announcement channel, which will list all my videos and my streams. Or if you want to run out on YouTube, you can just hope that I will show up in your sub feed at some point. You can hope, right? Uh, you can do that by subscribing and hitting the bell icon down below. 
And if you want to like and comment on the video, it's always really appreciated. It really helps out with the algorithm and stuff. You got to make your, your daily offering to the algorithm. So uh, if you can do so, very much appreciated. But until next time, stay shiny.